who are, you know, senior citizens, people's mothers and, and fathers, who are splitting their prescription or cutting pills in two so that they can divide it between two days so they can afford food. They're choosing between food and medicine. And this kid who I was talking to, who came up to me, said that one day a week, he has to choose between filling up his car or eating dinner that night. And Americans are making these impossible choices. I talked to a family living in an apartment that they can no longer afford, listening to their baby, crying in their arms, and having to wonder whether that baby is $50 sick or $100 sick or $500 sick before they bring them to the hospital. Um, one of the worst issues here is that the, uh, we, we hit the highest poverty level in the history of our country, the, the biggest strongest poverty this year. So, you know, what they're saying is prosperity. It is not looking like prosperity to Americans right now. And today, the average income for an American is $5,000 less than the, average, than the cost of living. So the cost of basic human needs, food, transportation, and housing. What that means is all of those people that, that, that the majority of Americans are now have a $5,000 deficit at the end of every year, no matter how frugally they live. And how are they paying for that? They're putting it on their credit cards. And Visa and MasterCard and Wells Fargo and Morgan and Chase are charging them 22% interest. If the mafia did that, yeah. it would be called loan sharking they go to prison.
large everybody in the country, and they sell off the assets of the country to American companies, including their foreign land. So they have to put their foreign land on the global market. And 28% of it has already been purchased by foreign corporations. Who do you think owns almost all of those corporations? <laughs> so, so they are, they, you know, Ukraine has the richest uh, foreign land in the world. It is a breadbasket of Europe. There have been thousands of years of wars fought over control of that, of that. My son fought for Ukraine. And uh, 400, since he fought there on the Kharkiv offensive, 400,000 kids have died in that country in a war that, that should never have happened. And those kids were dying to protect that farmland and from the Russians. But I don't think they were dying so that they could go to BlackRock. <laughs> but that is the outcome. And you know, we we're being shrimp mined. We saw, I it was in the beautiful, beautiful town today of Rochester that is, you know, reinvigorating itself and experiencing this incredible that gave me such inspiration that, that everything is selling. Yeah. You know, you see what's happening there and you see the quality of life of people who are locally oriented, concentrated on democracy, on local growth, on, on rebuilding.